In this tutorial, we'll learn how to click on tiles and select them from a grid. But before we dive in, let's address a few quick fixes from previous videos to ensure everything runs smoothly. First, open the Generator class and make sure the Tiles array is set to be Instance Editable. Next, let's improve the Clear Tiles function. When I first recorded this, I wasn't aware of the Reverse Loop node in the Blueprint, having come from a C++ background, but guess what? Using a reverse loop, we can directly destroy items in an array, and then clear the array at the end. So much more efficient! Lastly, in the Tile class, open the Calculate Location function, and make sure that for square tiles, you multiply the extent by 2. This will ensure our tiles are positioned correctly. If you haven't watched the Click on Actors video yet, please go check it out first. I won't be repeating the same steps in this video. For those of you in a hurry, I've also added a speedrun version of the tutorial, and you can find the link in the description below. Now, let's get started. Click on the Tile Mesh, and from the Collision menu, we need to enable the Click Channel for the Tile class. Make sure you set that to Block. I've created a new mesh for our tiles, so let's import that into the project. The edges are slightly curved to make each tile stand out more clearly for the player. We'll need to add a collision to ensure it responds to the click channel. To keep things organized, I'll create a new folder for materials. Let's start by making a base and simple material for our tile. Hold the 3 key on your keyboard and click on the graph to create a color node. Right click on it and convert it to a parameter, so we can change it from outside the material. Let's give it an initial gray color. Next, hold the 1 key on your keyboard and left. Click on the graph to add a scalar node. I don't need it to be metallic, so let's make it 0, but I want to make it rough so I can use a higher value. Now, let's create a material instance and apply it to the tile mesh. Back in the Tile class, open the Set Mesh function and switch the Square Mesh to the new mesh we just imported. To update its color in the game and editor, we need to create a dynamic material instance for the mesh. We'll call this function from the Set Mesh function, so we can set its color in the editor too. On the Mesh component, call Create Dynamic Material Instance. The source material will be the one we just made for the tiles. You can select either the base material or the material instance version. Promote the return value to a variable so we can access this material from anywhere in the class. To keep our variables organized, let's add this to a category. We can set an initial color for the tile by calling the set vector parameter on the mead node. The parameter name is color, as we set it in the material class. I'll promote this to a variable so we can use it later. This variable can also have its own category. For the default color, I want to use brown. You'll find out why in just a moment. Don't forget to call the createMead function at beginPlay, so we'll have that mead variable ready when we run the game. I think it's time to see what we've created. Add the Generator class to the level. And let's make a small 5x5 grid. Click on the Initialize Tiles button, and there we go. Your chocolate bar is ready. I bet you agree with me now that brown is the perfect default color. Next, let's add a default camera to the level. From the Place Actor menu, search for the Camera Actor and add it to the level. Find the best location and rotation that fits your level. Once your camera is in place, open the Level Blueprint graph. Search for the player controller and call the set view target function on it.
Right click on the graph, create a reference to the camera that is selected in your level and use it as the view target. We no longer need the camera placed in the player pond from the previous video, so let's go ahead and delete that. Now, the moment of truth. Let's test it. And everything works as expected. Fantastic. Now, we can use the power of interfaces to communicate easily between our classes. Let's create a new interface called BPI Interactable that we can assign to any actor that can be interactive. The first function in this interface will be on interact. As input, I want to tell the actor whether it's selected or not. I'll also create an output to check if the interaction is handled by the actor. This will be useful later. Go back to the Tile class, Open Class Settings, and add the interface we just made. Once you add the interface, the function will automatically be added to the class. For now, all I need the function to do is switch the color of the tile. So, let me create another variable to store the selected color. I think red will work well. Now, add the mead variable to the graph and ensure it's valid. We need to call the set vector parameter on that again. Let me make some space here. The parameter name is color, and I can use the select color node for the value. By connecting the input value to this node, we can switch between colors. If the tile is selected, use the selected color. Otherwise, use the normal color. Finally, we can successfully return the function result. Back to the player controller class, and let's make some changes to the click function. At this early stage, I want to filter out actors that don't implement the interactable interface we created. By adding this check, it only returns success when the actor implements that interface. I'll add a sequence node to make it easier to understand the steps, as we need to handle two different actions here. Let's also create a variable for the selected actor. In the first step, we'll check if any actor is already selected from previous clicks. If so, we can deselect it by calling on interact with a false input. In the next step, if the click is successful and we find an interactive actor, we'll check it against the previously selected actor. If it's not the same as the previously selected actor, the result is true, and we can select the new actor. Otherwise, clicking on the same actor again will deselect it. Finally, we can store the selected actor. Now, let's go and test it. As you can see, my click turns the tile red. When I click on a new tile, the previous tile returns to its normal color. And if I click on the same tile again, it deselects. Perfect. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Your support really helps me grow and create more content for you. This grid series has so much potential, and I'm excited to bring you even more videos in the future.